Folks, my next guest is an Emmy winner you know from CBS Sunday Morning and wait, wait, don't tell me. Please welcome my old friend, Mo Rocca. Hey, nice to see you again. Great Remind to see you. me of it's been so long since you and I have hung out together back in the old days at the Daily that were you always uh, distingue? Were it always sort of like distinguished gray, or did you used Inc to have dark hair? Okay, it's been a long ten years. No, I, 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 I have I always had. I think I started getting gray probably in my thirties. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so just early a few years on. Ago, just a few years ago. Just then. a few years ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? I've been great. I've been great. When you think back of those days that we were over at uh, at the Daily Show, because when did you start? I started in 1998. Oh, I started in 97. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we both predate uh, John Stewart. Exactly. From the yes. Craig Kilburn days. Right. All of those tapes have been lost. Oh, I think so. <laughs> exactly. Probably. Exactly. So you're 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 a correspondent on CBS Sunday Morning. You host Innovation Nation, also on CBS on Saturdays. Saturday mornings. And then you do Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which is right. also a weekend thing. Do you not work during the week? <laughs> I I spend the week preparing for my weekend media appearances. So I'm not at my best during the week. I'm generally I'm I'm eating. I'm sleeping. I'm stretching. I'm moisturizing. I'm just preparing during the week <laughs> for my weekend and then I for go two to whole days of work two yeah. whole solid days of work. right right and I go to bed early on Fridays and I wake up more in the morning on Saturday and for my media onslaught and it begins so but wow. yeah so so this is rare for for me to be asked to go on TV on a Tuesday you may regret it <laughs> I'm more of a weekend we'll see. person no, no I understand I totally understand it one of the things I remember about you even from the early days of the daily show is that you're a great you're, you're a presidential trivia buff right like, I think one of the first pieces you did was, like, First Lady's Birthplacers or something like that that nobody, the, the, nobody ever cares about or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was a, it, well, it was a guy um, who impersonated First Lady Florence Harding, Warren Harding's wife, and... Uh, a man who impersonated... Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. First Lady, it, sure. he was very good. It wasn't, like, a, a shticky act. He was very he committed. good. He committed. Yeah, he committed. He was eventually going to become all of Ohio's eight first ladies. They've had more first ladies than any other state, so shout out to Ohio and your first ladies. And, uh, <laughs> and he was, um, so that was one of the first ones I did. And then I think I also did one on the hometown of Andrew Johnson, our first impeached president, sort of a piece on how an impeached president's hometown memorializes him. So, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, that would come in handy these days, too, pretty soon. <laughs> But you, you know a lot about presidential trivia. Is it too early to have Trump trivia, or do you have to wait to see how sort of history remembers the person right. and then go, yeah, but did you know? Or right. is, there, is there trivia about Trump already? Well, one sort of, I think, notable fact about him or a piece of trivia is that he's the only president I can think of that has never had a pet. Uh, that doesn't have a pet in the White House. He doesn't have a dog. I think um, he was pitched a dog by a supporter, a, a woman I believe named Lois Pope, um, suggested that, um, offered her golden doodle named Patton, named after General Patton, and he didn't want the dog. So he's, um, so yeah, he's a petless president. And uh, <laughs> Harry Truman said, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. And it, it's been shown it will, boost your approvals. When President Clinton was having a hard time during the first term, when health care, they had the sort of the health care legislation debacle, um, he uh, retired Socks the cat. He got rid of the cat. And, uh, and he got a Labrador retriever named Buddy, who was a very popular dog, and that boosted his approvals. So if really President Trump got so a dog. So everybody up until Trump had a pet? Lincoln had a pet? Lincoln did have a pet. Lincoln had a couple of goats named Nanny and Nanko. Um, <laughs> And, of course he did, because they both had the same beards. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and there were ponies that Lincoln had for his boys, Tad and Willie. Um, Millard Fillmore did not have a pet, but after he retired, and this is true, he became the vice president of the Buffalo chapter of the ASPCA, so he kind of made up for it. Sure, and yeah, sure, yeah. ex post facto. Yeah. Now, you, you have a, a new podcast yes. called, and this is, the, uh, this is the number one podcast right now, I think. My understanding, I think it just leaped over uh, uh, the Daily at the New York Times. It's called Mobituaries. Right. 
It's about all of my favorite dead people, and, uh, and, um... We all have our faves. <laughs> right, right. Sure. No, no, I mean, look, I, I love obituaries. Are you an obituary reader? Good ones. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, uh, um, and... Inventor of sliced cheese dies. I want stuff like you that. Want, you want to know about the that? The man who came up with the idea to put paper between slices, I read that man's obituary, Did and I was very really? happy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and hopefully, we'll, we may include him actually in this series. But um, but a lot of people never got the proper send off, the send off that they deserved, or any send off. So, so uh, like people from the far history, like from far know? history. Well, sure. we're actually we have a mobituary on the Neanderthals because when they died forty thousand years ago, they never had an obituary. <laughs> so we have that. Um, no, we interbred with them, evidently. We did. We added that some of with us. Them. Some of the some of us are. Part uh, Neanderthal. Our friend Michael Ian Black is 2.9 percent Neanderthal. That oh, is. Oh, you can tell. It, you can tell. <laughs> forehead. Likely a very sloping forehead. Right. Yeah. And um, and it means you have extra immunity. Uh, uh, from what I don't know, but like on Survivor, what do you mean extra immunity? I think it, it, he says he never gets a cold. Really. He never gets sick, and he has kids, and he never gets sick. Wow. So, um, yes, but we did add mix with them. That's what they like. The, the scientists use that term, and, uh, and that's we, a technical term for doing it. Exactly. <laughs> and we met up in um, the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens met up in the Middle East, and that's where it happened. Oh wow! Right. So it's there's kind of hope for the Middle East. I was hoping I was, <laughs> someone got together in the Middle East. That's I was nice hoping to know. that they would play romantic Middle Eastern music. Would you play romantic Middle Eastern music? Oh, that is. This is where the Neanderthal is approached by the Homo sapiens, right? So the Homo sapien was was the he, person who asked the Neanderthal yes, out. Yes, yes, and his and, and his family is saying, no, don't go near her. She's not our kind. About the Neanderthal woman. So it's Romeo and Juliet, but with very thick foreheads. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> with a pronounced that. brow ridge. Well, it's great to see you again, man. Great to see Mo, you. Mo uh, Mo's new podcast is called Mobituaries. And the man is Mo Rocca. We'll be right back with a performance by Maggie Rogers.